the Jones Ball CR1000. This is one of the cheapest CPU tower coolers. And if is it any good for that price, we're gonna check out today. Hey guys, welcome back to How SS channel. My name is Ivan and today we're looking at the Jones Ball CR1000. This is a CPU tower cooler that retails about $20 on Amazon and features RGB fan, obviously, and four copper pipes that are directly contacting with the CPU. Now, this one prompted my attention because I know the company is creating some very interesting cases in the last couple of years. Some of them I really wanted to get, but for one and another reason, I couldn't uh, lay my hands on them. They were all made out of aluminum, different designs, not your orthodox and typical uh, computer cases, but I'm kind of familiar with their product. So when I saw this tower popping on Amazon, I was like, wow, maybe I should give it a try. $20, it's not that much, and it's probably gonna be a very good cooler for a budget bill. So what I'm gonna be using this one is on AMD Ryzen 5 3600X, not the regular 3600. I wanted to use it on slightly more powerful 3600X because it's up to a 95 watts instead of the regular 65 on the 3600. And I'm going to use it on ASRock's B450M. This is the Steel Legend motherboard. And I'm going to run some regular tests on it without the fans of the case turned on. Just the side open to see what kind of temperatures we're gonna get on that specific tower. So you guys can make the judgment if $20 is enough for you to spend and get this tower and put it on your budget build and channel all the rest of your budget towards uh, a new GPU. Now that they're finally a little bit more available, but still very expensive, you can go ahead and get something better instead of uh, spending a lot of money on cooling or the rest of the components. Personally, and from my experience, at 1440p, the CPU role is almost not existing and all is going to the GPU. So I'm personally playing on 1440p monitors. So all GPUs are pretty much taxed at 99% where the CPUs are staying between 10, 15, 20%. So that gives you uh, the answer of almost, almost all questions if the CPU is really relevant at that resolution and it's not that much. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're getting the latest uh, 12900K or you're still playing with uh, Ryzen 5 3600. At that resolution, the difference is almost not existing. Uh, we're gonna go ahead into the unboxing and see what's inside the box. Uh, then I'm gonna uh, do a quick installation. I'm gonna show you how it looks on the computer. I'm gonna run the tests, I'm gonna show you the results, and of course at the end, we're gonna talk about it in the conclusion. So quick look around the box before we move on. You see right on top, we have a good picture of the product. And the one that is pictured actually is uh, the black version, which I have uh, the white version. Uh, and the difference is the top plate is white and the fan is white. Everything else is exactly the same. Uh, some more information about the, the heat sink and fan inside. And this is the most valuable information right here in the back. Feel free to pause and read through it because I'm sure a lot of you will be wondering about the size and the dimensions are mentioned right on top. We have the heat pipes, four heat pipes. We have the fan, which is between 700 and 1800 RPMs, delivering airflow between 26.1 and 66.81 CFMs. Noise level between 22.55 and 37.2 uh, decibels. We have the maximum air pressure here specified and maximum heat dissipation, which is 160 uh, watts. You can use this one with uh, both AMD and Intel, all the Intel 1150- any number is supported here and AMD, AM4, 3, 2 and, and everything else. And the whole weight is 610 grams, so it's not a very heavy heat sink. And yeah, there's some more information here on the model. And if I go ahead and open it inside for your real needs, okay, I guess my real needs are putting a heat sink. Inside we have an English, very nice user manual that is specifying every single step, what do you wanna do? how to install it on AMD and on Intel. And I really appreciate the big illustrations and not only, only the text because you can see exactly what needs to be done. And the installation of this one is a pure breeze. Uh, after installing it, took me no more than 30 minutes for everything together. Super simple, just attach the provided metal brackets to the heatsink first. And then from there, you can just simply screw it on. On Intel, they're providing even a backplate. You can put that on. And these are the metal brackets they are talking about. These are the Intel ones. I already have the AMD ones installed. And look how thick metal these are. Very hard to bend. Actually, I'm applying a lot of force and I cannot bend these 
at all uh, with pre-attached screws which are on spring so all you need to do is once you attach them to the heatsink is just screw it down to the back plate and off you go that's the whole installation obviously you need to uh, put uh, some thermal paste on the cpu and they're providing some no name unbranded little baggy of thermal paste which i didn't use obviously i use my uh, regular uh, 9000 that i've been using for many 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 uh, builds so far and this is the backplate for intel again uh, kind of reminds me of the stock backplates on pretty much any pre-built and for amd you don't even uh, need to remove the backplate you just need to take the top two plastic brackets which for am4 they are held by four screws take these off apply the thermal paste and just screw uh, the heatsink directly into the backplate uh, that is stock on your motherboard the installation is extremely easily done and you guys are gonna see all that in a second and now because i got super excited to test this one i totally forgot to do the unboxing and show you the details of the tower itself but i'm gonna try to get as close as possible while it's inside the computer already and show you some of the good things about this tower and if it's perfectly in my specific case this is a case that it's made uh, by nzxt the side glass is not touching the top plate at all and when i turn it on you guys are gonna see this logo lights up uh, does the rgb same goes for the fan that's right here but as you can see there's plenty of space in the back if you have if you find some additional brackets to put a second fan and do push pull if you desire to do so but i think for this specific cpu and anything around that like uh, 5600x or any of the ryzen 5s this is plenty i think for the ryzen 7s maybe it will be a little bit uh, underpowered but for Ryzen 5 and lower, I think this cooler is perfectly fine. The clearance of the fan compared to the memory is not that big, but because how offset is from my memory slots right there, if I move my memory stick on the first slot, it's still uh, going to be sitting right in front of the fan and it's not going to be hitting it uh, in any way. And now if I slightly tilt uh, the computer, uh, you'll see again how much the clearance is here. Uh, the fan is clear because when the rgb comes on the rainbow effect kind of goes through you're gonna guys see that in a second uh, but this white kind of matches some of the element of this specific board which has this camel white and gray uh, color themed uh, this is kind of a thing what asarog is doing for the steel legend series uh, and so it looks pretty good i couldn't find a white spread heaters uh, memory but i think the black one kind of blends in uh, pretty well so yeah that's uh, pretty much it uh, for the overview before we turn it on i think the installation was extremely easy probably one of the easiest i've seen again a couple of good close-ups here on the installed tower you can see how it looks the installation right there with the bracket extremely easy and simple to be done and right here on the back side you can actually see uh, the copper heat pipes and how they're contacting uh, the metal bracket that it's uh, connecting to the back plate of uh, the motherboard and the whole thing looks pretty simple and actually pretty nice i have to uh, say that i am uh, surprised how well this jones ball uh, looks inside the computer all uh, right underneath it we have the evga rtx 3060 with a back plate hyper x fury 16 uh, gigabytes of memory and we have uh, two intake one exhaust fan uh, so all air cooled here nothing nothing fancy no water cooling nothing like that uh, and for the testing purposes i'm going to be stopping these fans and the exhaust fan uh, just going to rely on the tower to see what kind of performance uh, it's going to deliver
All right, conclusion time. And what do I think about the Jones Bowl CR1000? Well, for $20, I think you're gonna have a hard time finding anything better because currently even the Vertu towers are more expensive than this one. Originally, they released around $20 and they were a killer deal. But right now I'm seeing their price are creeping over $30. So yeah, that's uh, a quite of a hefty <laughs> increase uh, versus the $20 of the Jones Bowl. Now the look again is uh, somewhat uh, subjective. So if you like the white look or you're building a white based computer that has a lot of white uh, components inside, this specific one is perfect. There is a version that is black as well. You can use that one instead if your components are not white. But just keep in mind that the radiator itself and the pipes are in their natural color, which is copper and aluminum, and they're not gonna be painted. So it's not gonna be as fancy looking like some other ones, but for $20 and a budget build, I think that should not have any factor at all. And the performance is there. I see no temp temperature spikes. I see nothing extreme. All the tests I ran on Cinebench and gaming and everything else, the temperature stayed in control and way under what uh, AMD are recommending for that specific CPU. Uh, just again, keep in mind, the room temperature is between 22, 23, 24 degrees Celsius. So the results are quite pleasant for a tower that it's only $20. Now, if you want to replace uh, the fan in the future and have actual addressable RGB, there's no problem whatsoever. Just take the included uh, fan, um, throw it away, whatever you want to do with it, and put uh, some that it's addressable RGB. Or if you get another uh, bracket, you can do a push-pull configuration with uh, better fans, and that way the performance is going to improve, obviously. And this is uh, the beauty of uh, tower coolers, uh, most of them. You can improve your cooling uh, with just adding extra fan and better fan obviously but with the stock one i'm not disappointed and for the 20 dollars, i think the performance is great so for 20 dollars total budget here for this uh, tower cooler i absolutely approve it and i absolutely love it so yeah that's pretty much it guys hit the thumbs up if you like the video stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you're new check out the link in the description below if you want to support the channel directly it helps me tremendously to bring you videos like this daily and as always guys you have a wonderful day